that were honest to our apostles and elders of great millstone who do rule well, that by the spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwaf. That's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. Yachanan Awaf just coming at you with another quick, quick lesson. Praying that it's edifying by the spirit. And as um, soon as I seen this uh, article, I'm like, hey, it's a first scripture that came to mind is that Hebrews 10 and 31. Um, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. It really is, man. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a terrible thing. It's a dreadful, horrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living power, man. So let's just get a little bit of the, um, this article. It says, and this is from the New York Post, it says, Landscaper fatally runs over a homeless woman sleeping in California Park with a lawnmower. This is not a regular lawnmower, man. <laughs> if you've ever seen a city doing like the sides of roads and things of that nature, um, this is not like your regular, that shit is like a, <laughs> a damn air, uh, airplane propeller, man. It's like an airplane engine down there. It says um, a homeless mother sleeping in a California Park was killed last week after she was run over by a lawnmower. An investigator, investigators left chunks of her body strewn across the grass, her family claims. That's always the family popping out of the woodworks after, the, you know, talking about how sweet of a baby she was and he was or whatever. But where was your help when, when, when they was out there homeless, especially a young lady? It says um, the unidentified worker said he didn't see the sleeping woman until he noticed a body in the grass he had already made a pass through. Damn. The employee called 911, but Chavez, Chavez was pronounced dead at the scene. Family members said their grief has been compounded by what they called a disrespectful botched cleanup. They left big chunks of her all over the place, just covered up with the grass, the victim's sister, Rosalinda said we have to go and see the place because we wanted some kind of closure we wanted some kind of closure and to be right there looking at the ground and then all of a sudden seeing chunks of her is horrible even when they go back and, and, and pick up a dog from the street they take more time wow said Chavez's father Christopher said he was able to to pocket pieces of, of, of his daughter's bones, skull, and teeth in the days after the death. Man, that's judgment, man. That's judgment from Yahweh by Shimei Hawashah right there, boy. That's why we've been going off into these lessons on judgment. Because it's been a lot of women and children being judged in the most horrific way, man. You can't you can't get, I mean, this is very horrible right here, man. To get ran, you sleep in the grass. I don't understand. She must, she must have been high or something because there's no way that you can't hear those things. Those things are loud as shit because they just came and cut um, some air, um, grass in the area where I live in where they tore down some blighted homes and they kind of just planted grass. So they come and they do the, the, um, the lawns or whatever. Them things are loud, man. You can't just sleep through one of them things coming through. So she 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 might have been high or something. It says um, Chevrez is father. Oh, we got that part. Damn, he picked up bones and skull and teeth. Yeah. The woman's family believes the careless handling of her remains might be because she was one of the city's thousands of homeless residents. And that's a big thing here in America. The home of the brave. The land of the free. Where they get to talking about how that's the best place on earth to live. But in the meanwhile, it, it's not, man. <laughs> it is not. It's a lot of people that came to this country trying to be movie stars, trying to be actors, actresses, and singers, and rappers, and all kinds of shit. They thinking that when they get here, everything is going to be perfectly fine. And you come to find out, man, that you're in the house of horrors. This place is terrible. Okay, it says, um, Chevrez, who has a nine-year-old daughter, had been transient for the last three or four years, and often slept at the park, which was officially acquired by nearby E and J Gallo Winery the day before the tragic death. And she might be a Jake. She could be an E, man. Northern Kingdom or something like that. 
It says the 12-acre park is frequented by unhoused people and was once an authorized camping site for the area homeless before the ownership changed. Other homeless people said they saw Chavez wash her hair in the park's creek before going to sleep on the hill near the playground and basketball field. 20 minutes later, the moor came through. Wow. That's a way to go out right there, man. Chavez's family is now calling for justice and their loved one's death and for stronger city ordinance that protect homeless people. Well, I mean, it's, it's clearly an accident. The guy, it wasn't like hell, it, it wasn't like the guy, you know, just kept on more. As soon as he saw what he had done, he stopped it. He went and got the authorities. I mean, because like I said, well, I don't know about there, but I know the grass here, man, it'd be kind of high before they get to it. If, if something is in that damn grass, man, that, sometimes that grass be waist high. You can't see what's in that grass because, man, they, they cut up couches. They cut up tires, car tires, uh, damn um, car back, anything that people throw off into those lots and stuff, man. You see that shit just strewn everywhere. That's how I know when you're looking at the blade. Them, I've seen them. These things are huge, and some of them are bigger than others. Okay, it says she. Now they talking about this right here. They want justice, but why weren't you? What? What was? What the fuck was she doing out there? What was she doing out there? Was she? Was she? You know. You know. Did she? I mean, come on, man. Now you all of a sudden want justice. And they'll be trying to get a lawsuit and everything. You'll have these families, man, they don't give a shit about their family member until they die. Ain't seen them, don't care for them, don't want to even try and do nothing for them. Then the minute something happened to them, you know, they, they, and it's money that they, they feeling as if they can get us involved. They're on the, they Johnny on the spot then. It says, we want ordinances to change so it doesn't happen again. Regardless, if they are homeless, they are still people and should be treated the same as any other people. Hey, yeah, well... Hey, look, I guess you could, you know, comb the area maybe a little bit better. You, I mean, you know, but trust me, man, when I, them fucking lawnmowers, man, if, if she got hit by one of them, they lucky to have found it, man. It could be pieces of her every damn where. Them things, man, I'm telling you, them things are powerful, man. But anyway, let me get the scripture that I, I, I was quoting. And it is what it is, man. But that's judgment from you. How about she, how was shy, man? First off, the Lord put you out there to be homeless, and then he, he, he has a damn lawnmower come and cut your ass up after. Man, that's, boy, you cannot tell me, man. This is why we always do these lessons, and we go out on the highways and byways. We let our, pe we let our people know, hey, look, man, you're, if you can't repent because you love the Lord, you should at least consider repenting because he's terrible. <laughs> you should be, you know, at least um, thinking on the fact that, OK, he's all powerful. And but see, you, you, you have people with this Christianity mentality that the Lord loves everything and he loves everybody. People don't get the real truth of what the Lord is really like when they go to these churches. They think of white Jesus. He's holding that little baby lamb. He looks so sweet and innocent. He just and then they're telling you, come as you are. You can do what you want to do. They're not telling you that the Lord is the one that killed and make alive, man. That's very important to know. This is Hebrew, Hebrews 10 and 31. And it reads, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I mean, can y'all can't even imagine that, bro? God, like, ah. And my thing is, how the fuck did you not hear that lawnmower? So I'm thinking to myself, she had to have been drunk high or something, man. There's no way that you can go into that type of sleep. But the Lord put her into that deep sleep. The Lord put her into that deep sleep. Judgment, man. I can't imagine what she might have done in her past life. Or even this one, for that matter. You got a nine-year-old, but your ass just out here on the streets just doing whatever. And that, that, that sounds like a drug, like um, a drug type thing right there, man. A lot of, a lot of people, you know, be out here on these streets and they be on, on drugs because obviously you can clearly see the family knew who she was, where she was, where she would be hanging out at. So that it, it sounds like something that she was doing on her own. It don't sound like she didn't have a place to go. But see, the Lord has set you all up like that, though, man. Well, let's go off into, um, I'm just going to grab a couple of the classics, man. Because people need to know these particular types of scriptures right here. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. 
Because when I went to church, I never heard these scriptures. It says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So see, people, they, they, they hear these scriptures. They probably don't read through them. I'm sure pl plenty of pastors have read through them, skimmed by them. And they're just thinking, oh, that's just a part of that particular story. But what they don't know is when you read the scriptures, you have to see that this is a um, something that the Lord does. It's not something that he's just done. <laughs> it's something that he does and can do when he wants to do it. And, and, and these pastors don't don't give it to these to the people straight. And they just be out here just doing what they want to do. Just doing what they want to do. But the Lord is terrible, man. Let's get this one. Isaiah 45. I'm going to end out. I'm not going to keep it long. That's just a terrible way to go out, man. But And then your dad, you know, the dad, that's judgment on the whole family. The dad out there picking up pieces of your damn skull and, te you know, just chunks of you. Just, you know, because she, who knows how big she was. But, I mean, it's just like, ugh. Because I just seen these particular types of uh, moors the other day. They just came through my neighborhood. It was like about six of them at a time. And they real loud. And I'm like, you know, how the hell could you not hear that? Anyway, Isaiah 45 and 7, it says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So it's the Lord that creates peace and evil, man. The Lord was sent a bad time upon you. The Lord will send a bad thing upon you. The Lord can send wild beasts on you, man. <laughs> hey, for real. That's that scripture where um, it talks about how the Lord, he, he created spirits for vengeance. The Lord created spirits for vengeance. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Uh, that's a lot. Ecclesiasticus uh, 39. Start at verse 28 here. And it reads, there be spirits that were created for vengeance. There are spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So the, the Lord, you know, was appeasing his wrath by doing this lady like this. It says fire. And hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment. And they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. So. This is why we need to have a, felt, a, a healthy fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And this is the reason why we do these lessons. We hey, we had to bring out the whole book. See, Christians want to give you this, this fairy tale about how good the Lord is all the time. Like the Lord will knock your ass off, man. And, and it's a lot of judgment. A lot of judgment been going out on women lately, man. I, I mean, that, I, the videos, most of the videos I've done this year when it comes to judgment, a lot of them, most of them, I got to say, the majority of them are, um, are women and children these days. You had the little Eve here in the playground. She was 12 years old. No, she's 11 years old. She gets um, damn acid thrown on her by another 11-year-old in a damn fight. Who the hell throws acid, man? That sounds like, you know, when you hear that, you're thinking of um, over there in um, India or whatever, man. Anyway, I did want to get one more. Let's get that Amos 3 and 6 and we'll end out. Amos chapter 3, verse 6, and it reads, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord have not done it? See? That's, that's, that's clear cut right there. It's the Lord, man. It's the Lord. I never heard these scriptures when I was in the, in, in the, in the Christian church. and used to go faithfully. You know, they, while they playing that goddamn organ, they're not telling the people that, hey, you need to have some healthy fear of, of, of the Lord and obey the Lord because that the obedience goes a long ways with the Lord, man. So just wanted to chop off into that, man. I pray that this lesson was edifying. Hey, repent to the Father, Yahweh, in the name of his son, Yahweh. With that, Kwame Yashallah.